Look what the cat dragged in. Look who I found. A 10-time winner on tour. The greatest interview in the history of the program. And not only is he playing and playing well, he's thrown his weight into a new instructional and social networking website called secretinthedirt.com, which we will talk to momentarily. But coming off the Masters, I had to run him down. It's been way too long. Steve Elkington joins us now. Elk, what is up? Oh, good day, Jim. Mate, it's been a bit long since I've been in the jungle, but uh, it's nice to be back. It's been way too long, Elk, and it's great to have you back. You know, you got kind of a tough 09, but you have bounced back really nicely, and you're playing well. So first of all, update me. How do you feel right now, and how is the year shaping up? Mate, I've had some good weeks this year. Last year was a mess. You know, it was one of those, one of those setups where couldn't put two rounds together. All those goals out there know how that goes. I've, one day I'd show up like Sam's need, next day I'd show up like Sam's office. <laughs> but, uh, but this year, this year, mate, I've got my game straight and uh, I've had some good weeks and I'm down here at Hilton Head getting ready for this one. And uh, just like everybody else, mate, I enjoyed watching the Masters this weekend. What was your takeaway from the Masters? When we start to break that thing down, we'll talk more about your game in a minute, Elk. But watching lefty, for instance, Phil Mickelson, you know he's been dealing with a lot of personal things. To see him show up and play the way he did, what was your biggest takeaway from his week? Well, mate, you know, the whole thing with Tiger coming back to Masters, I was like everybody else, mate. I was there on Sunday with, with the fans watching the, you know, watching the tournament and the whole fixation with Tiger, you know, his fixation with the map of Tasmania that he's had going on for the last five months. He's finally got back in there and then... When I turned the TV on, on Sunday, they've got the CBS has got the shot up. You know, they got Mickelson all in black on the range, and he's hitting lefty, and then Tiger's on this side, and he's hitting, and Tiger's sweating, and he's got muscles everywhere. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at Phil, and I'm thinking to myself, mate, dude's got like a meat curtain. He, he may even have a back meat curtain. And I'm thinking to myself, this is just, it's just, it's, you know, and it's, there's all this thing where you know he used to wear a helmet on his head when he was a kid because he'd bump into walls and everything. Well, I'm thinking to myself, mate, I believe that story that he had a helmet on his head because he's bumping into everything. But as the tournament went on, Jim, I gotta I gotta I gotta make a few comments about Phil. Mate, the shot he hit at thirteen, I mean, come on, give me a break. But not only that shot, but the shot at twelve, the shot at fifteen, the shot at sixteen, the shot at eighteen, probably the shot at eighteen that he just sealed it with. Mate, it was probably a better shot than the one he hit at 13. The one at 13 will be roped off forever, and everyone will go down there, and they'll probably try to hit that shot, or people will be walking past that shot till the end of time. So the thing I like about Mickelson, and you've got to, tell, you've got to, you've got to give the guy props, mate. He will not lay up. He will not lay back. He doesn't play for money. And, mate, the guy's a legend. I have to give it to him. High praise. Elk laying it all out. Elk, you, know, you wonder, I mean, the Masters, of course, is set up for him, and we know he's going to attack. We know he's never going to lay up. What about the U.S. Open? What about Pebble Beach? How do you think he'll do there? Well, you know, before I finish that, you know, when he came off that green, mate, and he and he, he walked into the arms of his wife there, and, and one of the other things I like about, you know, that whole day was that, you know, he just he just bathed in the adulation of his family, and you can just tell, tell how tight, tight-knit he was, mate. And if he had nothing else and he had that, I mean, you'd be a pretty wealthy guy, you know? And and that tear rolled down his eye, and it was like the first thing I've ever seen from him that either wasn't rehearsed, looked like it wasn't rehearsed, or looked like it wasn't, you know, set up to wave. He's got the Arnold Palmer thumbs up nerve, and he's got all the moves, mate, but that move there and the closeness of that family, uh, you know, as opposed to a guy that's standing probably 50 yards away under a tree doing another interview, Tiger, and he's He's in a totally different spot, and I heard Feinstein's piece yesterday, and he's spot on, mate. The guy, the guy is in ta- is shattered, mate. His life shattered compared compared to Mickelson. It's just a, it's a very contrast. It's ironic to stand on the same piece of turf. Steve Elkington joins us. You know, Elk, you touched on something with Mickelson that I think a lot of people don't want to hear or a lot of people don't believe. But when you talk about him being sort of rehearsed, I mean, is he not? what he seems and is he insincere and maybe not as genuine as he might appear mate I'm, I'm getting over all that a little bit my, I, my wife said I said did you see that how good that was there at the end you know when he went over to his missus and, and all that and, and she said oh she said it, he's always been crazy about him it's, it's, that's just common knowledge and, and I thought to myself you know well that's cool you know that's cool but anyway it was a, it was a great win I mean like I said, the guy's a legend, and uh, a lot of these young guys that are on tour that lay up and all that. And you know what? I don't blame them for laying up some of them because there's a lot of cash at stake. But if they were playing in an amateur tournament, they wouldn't be laying up. And Mickelson, he's just not. 
down there because it's over. I mean, he's, he's, he's cut him out right there. Now, look, you're old school. You like that about Mickelson. I mean, maybe maybe not everything, but you like that he, he's he got stones, he's got onions, whatever you want to say. He's out there to carve a guy's heart out. You respect that, don't you? I do, mate. He's, he's heavy. He's hard to beat. Serious hard to beat. You come down the, down the stretch with him. Now, sometimes he doesn't know when to not have a go. Like, at the U.S. Open, he could have just... I mean, he'd be the first one. If he was if he was here telling you today, he'd be the first one to tell you you should have knocked the two iron down. Yeah, what about that? What about that? When Feinstein came on, Feinstein said that the ghosts are now gone, the demons have been erased, that that's no longer in the back of his head. If you go through something like that, is that now out of his head, or does it not matter how many majors he wins, that's always going to be there? No, mate, it's always there. I lost the playoff at the O2 meter field, and I think about it every day. I had a three-foot or a six-foot on the last hole, probably to win outright. And Nicholson beat me at Baltusrol in the 05 at the PGA, and then and you're humming and hiring about what, you know, should have won that one. But there was a rain out with three holes to go the day before, we had to come back. He was he was on the ropes, mate. He was on the ropes like your cage guy that was on a minute ago, and uh, he got reprieved and came back the next morning fresh and, and made a feather at the last hole and, and, and bumped me. But at any rate, you know, that's golf, and that's the way it goes. But... You know, going forward, mate, uh, with the uh, Pebble Beach, you know, that's another one of my favorite, favorite courses for Tiger. And then, of course, we go to St. Andrews, which is an odd, you know, twist of uh, where Tiger will be Tiger will be going for a pair of jugs, mate. Not not those jugs, pirate jugs, mate, at St. Andrews, which will be a rare, and I'm sure the British press will have a bit of a, a gouge at him when he goes over there. So, <laughs> I don't know, mate, if this is going to go away, you know. The caddies... If you, go, if you want to go down into the caddy yard and you find out the nicknames of all the players, you know, it's always been hefty in the cat. You know, they call Tiger the Cat. All the black caddies call Tiger the Cat. Uncle, mate, cat's a whole different meaning than, than cat on the street. So, it, you know, there's a fair bit, <laughs> there's a fair bit of uh, at least jungle lingo wrapped up in the bit. A lot of I it. actually love. A lot of it. Hey, Elk, what, I mean, is he, in your opinion, is he a broken man? And if so, how is that going to impact his game? Because considering the time he missed and the things that he was fighting, he showed up and he was able to grind and be a factor. Yeah, the only thing that I don't agree with what everyone else was saying was that he played really bad. I mean, right. he didn't play bad. He hit some loose drives, but, you know, Augustus is that kind of course. And uh, Mickelson hit some loose drives as well. If they probably, if you added up all the loose drives Mickelson hit, and you added up all the loose drives that the Cat hit, mate, they, they probably, you know, it'll probably wash itself out. It's just that uh, Tiger just, you know, look, look like, you know, look worse. But to see him to show up and play and finish fourth, as he said, he wasn't very happy. But, mate, I don't care what he says. I reckon he'd have to be halfway pleased with that performance. All things considered. Yeah, how could you not? Steve Elkinson joining us. Elk, yeah, now, you, you're playing well, and your health is good, and you're keeping busy, yet you're spending a lot of time working on a new instructional and social networking website, secretinthedirt.com. Now, I would say to you, give me your pitch, but what your pitch is, you don't really have a pitch. Now, mate, I've done a lot of things in my life, but one of the things that I did do is I've spent a lot of time on this, this project called secretinthedirt.com, and it's a... Mate, they thought... They thought when Facebook was built, it was all over with. But I think I'm actually ahead of the curve by building just a vertical for one subject, and I built it for golf. And the reason I built it was twofold. One, I didn't want to... Uh, when I was a young kid growing up in Wagga Wagga, it was hard, it was hard to get discovered. And so Secret and Dirt gives every kid in the world, or any golfer in the world, a chance to put up their swing, let everybody look at it. You can look 